Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're so happy to announce Zim Oct. That's Zim 8, ooh, with styles for the components on the canvas. So that, um, they're very similar to CSS, where we can style the components from one place and apply styles to um, all of the components, or specific types of components, or groups of components. And then, of course, you can go right to the component and override that. So let's take a look, shall we? Ooh, my. So here is a styled page, nice and pink. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, we've also got a waiter that is styled and a pane that's styled, etc. Keyboard, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Keyboard that's styled. <clears throat> All right. And uh, aside from styles, you can apply other things as well such as, uh, just a second, let me refresh that. Yeah, there we go. Um, we can apply other things as well, such as here's an outline, and you can style things to be able to drag or transform or gesture as well. Okay, let's have a look, a as well as things like, um, so it's all of the component parameters, as well as X and Y, uh, scale X, scale Y, scale, and these other things as well, um, the transforms. Alrighty, <laughs> as promised, <laughs> let's take a look. So we'll reduce this down, and we'll go into the uh, Zim style example here. This is available at zimjs.com slash style.html. And we're in Zim 8 in a fit template. Can you see that right? Let me just increase this if we can. Oh. <laughs> Adam increases, hit the control plus, it increases, and hit the control plus again, and then it decreases. It's like, come on, Adam. Uh, so here's what it looks like. You apply the styles at the top of your code like this. Style equals and background color pink. Well, let's change the background color to blue. So this is all components and we'll swap it to pink. It's all components unless they're overridden down below. All right, so it was pink and we refresh. Ah, it's blue. Woohoo! Um, let's see, there's a corner of 15. What if we say, please make all corners zero. Let's check that out. And there's what it looks like styled with all corners zero. So uh, that's neat. And we've done the same with other things. Now, not all components have a step, for instance, uh, but the components that don't have a step will just ignore that. So that's okay. So basically any component with a step will be a step of one unless in the type we override it. So here's a label, a keyboard, a color picker, etc. So we could go to whatever has a step in here, a slider has a step, and we could say step colon two comma. And if we save this up and refresh here, there's a step of one and refresh. Now there's a step of two on the sliders. Any other component with a step, such as the dial here, is still fine with a step of one but we just over. Okay, so I'll undo that. And we can also choose to ignore. For instance, the keyboard right here has an ignore on the shadow color. So uh, the reason for that is the shadow color is a minus one, which turns the shadow colors off in here. Just do a refresh there. There's back. So the keyboard right now has a shadow. You can see that in there? A shadow to sort of bring it up over top of all the rest of the blue. I don't know if I would advise this <laughs> for styling, but anyway, it's just showing you that it can be done. Um, as well as styles on things like, uh, let's see, I, I could have styled that. How do I get that thing? Oh yeah, that's right. We edit in here, so that's been styled as well. Um, anyway, close that down. So. We wanted the keyboard to have a shadow, but nothing else to have a shadow. So if we don't, if we comment out the shadow, so now everything's got a shadow, actually that's not quite true. There's a lot of uh, components that don't come with shadows. The slider doesn't traditionally come with a slider. Uh, the tabs, for instance, don't. The shadows on tabs just are uh, kind of a silly thing to do. <laughs> and the dial as well, because of the indicators, we haven't put it. Now, you can manually really force a shadow if you want on there, but believe me, it doesn't, it doesn't really look good. <laughs> um, but you could just go to it and say dot shadow 
or dot sha s h j on a dial, and there you've got a shadow. So it's not the end of the world if you can't do any of this. But there's the shadows turned on. So now we're going to turn the shadows off. But we want to still keep the shadow on the keyboard. So we can tell it to just ignore any previous things. If we if we take that off, you'll see that the keyboard no longer has a shadow. So we took all the shadows off. Now we hit the keyboard, and the keyboard no longer has a shadow either. So if we bring that back, doop, like so, then refresh here, bring up the keyboard. The keyboard is back to ignoring the fact that we were turning the shadows off. So there's an ignore there. There's also an ignore down here. You'll see where we're creating our buttons and stuff. We can completely ignore styles by just saying ignore styles like that, colon true on any component and that would just uh, ignore styles as well. So now our button is back to the normal button. It doesn't have the style, the colors, etc, etc. That's no longer got a corner of zero. All right, so uh, back up we go. All right, that's a little bit about all that stuff. Now down here we've got a group. So these are the things that are a little bit different. We're, we're doing a type. So these are component types. Note the capital letters for the class. And then we've got a group. So this is like classes in CSS where we can say, ah, you know, uh, some of these want shadows. You know, we've got no shadows. Some of them want shadows. So in a sense, we could have added the keyboard if we wanted to. We could have added the keyboard to the shadows group, and that would have also solved it. So we can come down and pick, say, the progress bar and say uh, group colon shadows and quote shadows. And by the way, you can be part of multiple groups um, on the front page like that. So now the progress bar is a member of the front page group, et cetera, et cetera. So, oh, we want to keep the shadows one here, and we will see then that our progress bar gets a shadow. So now it gets a shadow. Cool. That is the styles for the components. Uh, how, how about we just take a look? I mean, that's great. Let's take a look and see what it, what what's behind uh, the behind the hood <laughs> under the hood <laughs> behind the scene <laughs> under the scene all right so we'll go into the zim 8 docs here or the, well this is zim 8 the the full version which is used to make the docs uh, the docs on this by the way are really nice so you're welcome to take a look oh that's for the indicator, but maybe we'll see the docs in just a sec. Uh, this is your average component, the indicator. A couple things on that component at the end here of each one, there's a group and ignore styles. So these two parameters have been added to the end of all the components to be able to handle those. If we, we come in, and so we are storing a property, so if you want, you can ask, is the indicator, when you make the indicator, you could ask for its group, and it would tell you that it was shadow. And then what we're doing is we're, if we ignore styles, we're creating this default style. This is a default style a variable at the moment. We're putting an empty, uh, empty object literal in there. So if we ignore styles, we do this one, else we do this one over here. And here we're calling zim get styles for this dot type, and the type is an indicator, and this dot group, and the group is whatever is passed into it. So this is basically in the top of all of the components, this uh, kind of stuff. So let's go take a look at the get style. Oh, a little bit more in here. Once we get the style, it's going to put all of the styles inside of these squiggly brackets for us to use here. And then instead of saying the default width is 300, this is how it used to be before we introduced styles, it was, hey, if there's no width, then let's make a width of 300. If there's no height, then let's make a height of 50. So those are the local or original default styles. So now we say, is there a width available to us on the default styles? So if that's not equal to null, then please apply the default style width. Otherwise, 
apply 300. And so kind of unfortunately, we've had to do that for every, so it added a little bit, but not too much. It was sort of like added 17K by the time we made all these things go on here. It's not quite over yet because we have to also see what's behind the get style. So let's go there now to, here's the get style. Now this thing right here is for Zim Distill. Zim Distill records all of the functions and classes and so forth that are used so that you can minify only those that are used. Now this would be called for every um, component that's made. So we've decided to just call it um, call it once. Uh, the What happens with distill is it outputs to a window and you get uh, answers or numbers for all of the things that you've used. You take that and put it in distill. So it doesn't really matter if it duplicates, but in some cases we're ignoring that. Anyway, you, you don't need to, to worry about that. <laughs> um, there's a... Uh, Oh, that's the global Zim ignore. So if you want, when you ignore something, you can either put it in as a string. Let's just go back and check that for a sec. Can't remember if I told you that. That can be put in as a string. If you want, you don't have to use the string. You can just pass in ignore. We figured um, you may forget to put those quotes there and it uh, <laughs> really didn't do much harm for us to say, all right, that's all right. And that's really the only keyword aside from type and group, it's really the only thing extraneous to normal programming that we've got involved in the style. So that's nice. It makes it quite easy to, to manage. All right. So back over here then, uh, we receive what's in Zim style. So if you have, if you call that Zim dot style, then it's that. If you just call it style, then so we're, we're bringing in either one of those. And we're basically copying those. So we're copying the styles in, um, so that we have our own, for each component, our own set of styles that we're going to manipulate. And the way we manipulate it is we take a look at the group. By the way, this little bit here uh, is splitting it. So if the, if, uh, so we're splitting the groups on a comma. And then we're looping through that. If there's just one of them, it's just going to loop the one. So it really doesn't matter too much. If it's more than one, then it'll loop more than one time. So just this line and these things, that's all it took. That and that is all it really took to be able to apply multiple groups to a component or an object. Isn't that nice? So then down in here, what we're doing is we're merging our, our groups. So we take a look. If, if we're if there's a style that matches our group, then we merge that style that matches the group in with our group styles. So we've started a group styles, so that will handle multiple. And we also get rid of our local copy. Remember, this is our own local copy, so we get rid of that um, group member. And then we come on, next, processed it already, and we come on down here, and what we're doing is we're asking for the styles from the type. So here's us getting the type of things, and then we're merging that type. If the if the style types, like we're all components, like see, we were uh, looking at an indicator, weren't we? So if there's styles for an indicator, it takes those styles for the indicator and it matches or it merges it with our overall styles. And in the merge, all of these ones will overwrite any matching ones. So you'll get all of the original ones, and then you'll overwrite ones that come in specifically for that component here. And then we merge the group. So here's us merging the types first, which means it will take a look at all indicators, and then it will merge the group on top of that. So any group styles will get merged into the overall and overwrite any ones that are the same name. Then we're looping through all those and any that match ignore, we're just removing them. So those styles are ignored. And then we clone anything that's clonable because if you are passing in, say, a button as a style, 
uh, and you use it on several sliders, it would, if you didn't clone it, it would use that same button on the first one, and then as soon as the second one's made, it would move the, that button to the second one, and then it would move it to the third one, and so the last button made would end up with your with your actual button object. But if you clone them, then that means they're they're using different ones. And then we're returning our styles. So the styles from this processing right here. So that's not bad, huh? Take a look at that. That's the processing of the styles being returned. Now there's uh, that basically, oh, sorry. That basically does it. There's one more thing here though, and that is on the container. So all styles, what we did after is added, hey, what about transforms? How could we style whether uh, it, it's got a rotation? Because the rotation isn't supplied in the parameters of a component. That's something that's set after, along with all these other things like alpha and skew and reg and all that kind of stuff. So what we've done is taken the basic transforms and thrown in whether it's visible or not. All these are numbers. Visible is Boolean. Um, we've taken those and we, at the, at the bottom of the component, we call a style transform. So let's just peek at that quickly. F2. There's the indicator. So down at the bottom of the indicator, right there, at, just before we clone everything, we call the style, or well, just before we define the clone, we're not really cloning, um, we call a style transforms on the DS. So if we uh, remember the DS is the thing that have, have the styles specified. So if we come into the default style, let's do one for instance, and we'll make, how about we make, uh, Slider stepper dial. We'll make the dial twice as big. Comma scale colon two. So we've set a style for the dial to have a scale of two. That scale would be in here, and when we call it, which is right here, down at the bottom of the container. We're calling it, we're passing in the styles. Uh, we're checking, do the styles have an outline? Do the styles have a drag? Do the styles have a gesture or a transform? And if so, then gesture it or drag it. For the outline, it needs to be added to the stage and same with transform. So we wait just a little bit and then we outline or transform it. So in theory, as we move ahead, we can call more functions just by inserting them here like that. It's, it doesn't, it's not really that much of a bother. Right now they're dragging, for instance, is default, but if we wanted to, if styles has drag, and then we put common delimited um, string in there, for instance, of drag properties, or some maybe even the actual object literal, I suppose we could put the, uh, that's right, I would probably make the most sense. We could put the uh, Zim duo configuration object as a value. Then we can just pass the value of this into here and the whole thing will have that value. Oh, darn, that's really easy. Okay, look for that in 8.1 then. <laughs> yeah, so that would be pretty easy. Right now we're just overriding that makes make the drag the current target true. Um, but anyway, we've also looked through the transformation list. So we loop through these and we check to see if the styles have that specific transform. So does it have a scale? Does it have a rotation, etc.? Oh, and it'll say, yes, the scale is not equal to null. We've set it to two. Therefore, we're going to, um, on this, apply the transform to that value, to the value that comes from it. So there we go. What we're looking at right here is how we can apply transforms. Uh, and let's take a look. So we're here and we're making the dial twice as big and we refresh and now the dial is twice as big. Cool. I think that's a pretty in-depth look through the specifically the style um, of Zim Oct. And wow, are we ever excited about that. Basically, what you've just seen really comes very close to what you have in CSS and HTML. And it was fascinating actually coding that and going, oh my gosh, you know, there's less than 100 lines of code here and I've just styled, I've just coded CSS. <laughs> now, these styles are not set to apply, be applied after the components made. All of these are made 
um, uh, all of these are applied as the components are made. You can modify the styles and then make more components, but you can't change what these look like with styles. And because we're encoding, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to go in ahead and change the color of this button or the color of you know the dial, just say uh, dial dot background color equals green. And why why would you go dial dot style dot background color equals green? We've already got the system of changing this stuff afterwards. The only one that we don't have, I suppose, is a changing a class. You know, in CSS, you can say, all right, now please make the class for this object be this, and the whole object changes. Basically, that would just be rewriting the object. And uh, I suppose you can do that. You could just uh, recall the object, like just remove the old one and remake the new one, and it would get the new style. So. Um, anyway, who knows what the future will be. Let's just try that drag out, shall we? As the last one, we didn't really see that. So which one on here shall we transform? Do you want to transform the slider or the uh, tabs there? Let's go in. So can you think about how you would do that? How do I transform all tabs? Well, you would go transform. And this, by the way, is by adding the transform tools as, as you're about to see here. So there's us transforming the tab and we refresh here and now the tabs are transformable like so. Cool, huh? And we can rotate them. Now we can't actually use them at the time because the, the transform is, is overwriting that, but you can turn those transforms off, have a save button or something like that. And there, I've saved my interface. That's, that's how I want it. <laughs> <laughs> and once you do that, the transforms would no longer work. It's pretty easy to turn off transforms. And uh, there, there you go. Uh, okay, so why don't we leave it at that? Isn't that cool? Oh, there's an outline, by the way. So if you take a look out, uh, it, it's really neat. Watch this. Um, outline. So here we're everywhere. Outline. Oops. Uh, colon true. Like so. We save that up and we refresh here. And everything on the screen has an outline. So that has been um, that has been desirable to have something like that uh, for some time. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> Fantastic, huh? So that's uh, what's bubbling at Zim. And heck, if you don't come in and start using Zim, you guys are crazy. You know, come on in. This stuff is so cool. Uh, there's all sorts of things. This is just one thing. There's all sorts of been seven other versions of Zim with fascinating ways to, to, to code things. So uh, looking forward to having you here. Come on by the Zim uh, Slack team or channel and say hi to us as well, zimjs.com slash slack. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. I'm uh, Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day or night.